was so proud of a man. I'm Tommy Salmons. This is Year Zero. Today, I have a good friend of mine, Brian LaFleur. You may know Brian from me talking about my syndicalist friend. Brian's a good dude, and he found himself in a precarious situation last year. And we decided to do a podcast talking about just the growth of his standpoint over the last year from being under federal surveillance and the lockdowns and realizing just what is meant by some of the anarcho-communists or the tankies when they are describing their ideology. But first, ryanbunting.com. For all of your graphic design needs, go to ryanbunting.com. Ryan Bunting is a great libertarian and a great anarcho-capitalist. He's also a pretty decent graphic designer. He designed my podcast logo and Pete Quinones podcast logo for a free man beyond the wall. So go to ryanbunting.com for all of your graphic design needs. And as always, thank you, Tom Burton for the music. Enjoy the show. All right. I'm here. Finally, two years in the making with my boy right. Brian LaFleur. What's going hey. on, dude? What's going on, brother? <laughs> you know what? Like, I talk about you on the podcast all the time. Um, I don't mention you by name, but I'm always like my syndicalist friend. My syndicalist friend was telling oh, me, yada, shit. yada, you yada. blew my cover now. I did, <laughs> man. I did. Like, it's all good. I told, I told you, if they hate you, I'm going to make you a co-host. <laughs> Fuck these oh shit! <laughs> but oh, so but yeah, no. So anybody's wondering whenever I'm talking on the podcast about my syndicalist friend, this is the guy I'm talking about. Uh, I love Brian to death. We've known each other what three years now, probably. And uh, met this, through Justin King. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. And I, I don't even pay attention to that guy anymore. No, really. Oh yeah, I just I, I get the feeling he's a. He's a psyop, but you know, like whatever. <laughs> and maybe that was it too. Who knows, man? Like yeah. It's hard to say. Well, so so not only has your year been wild for all the same reasons that everybody else's year has been wild, but it's been wild for different reasons, which I want to get into here in a little bit. But okay. I want to start off a little bit about your past and your ideology and how your past has kind of contributed to the ideology that you found yourself knee deep in. Okay. Um, well, I was born and raised in Southeast Texas, um, in Channel View in Harris County. It's part of Houston, the unincorporated subdivision, mm -hmm. uh, right there on the ship channel, um, yep. between there and then up in Montgomery County, a little town called Porter, which is right off of 59 by Humble and, uh, Kingwood. Lived a little bit of my time with my grandmother further up in Northeast Texas, a little town called Atlanta, Texas, Cass County, just outside of Texarkana. Yeah. Um, I'd say about, I was arrested for the first time at 13. I spent all of my adolescent years uh, um, either in, uh, like, they've had me in foster homes, they've had me in psychiatric institutions, they've had me in state schools. I've been to, I went to almost every state school that the Texas Youth Commission had at that time uh and when i wasn't inside i was either on probation or parole or both at the same time didn't know they could do that but they can um and then uh i ended up going to prison adult prison in, uh, in my early 20s i said i got arrested in 2002 they caught me in valdosta georgia and uh i ended up doing six years total i had three six-year sentences for aggravated assault and then I got out in 08, um, December of 08, without a fucking clue. The world had really changed and moved a lot, done a lot since then. And, you know, it's a uh, resocialization and getting real used to things takes a time. And, 
you know, even even today, I would say that, you know, I'm st I still struggle with some of the, you know, the institutionalization. But um, mm -hmm. uh, as far as ideology, you know, when you're locked up that much, um, you jack off, read and work out and not necessarily in that order. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> sounds like the army. <laughs> <laughs> as far as as far as it being strict and, and, and pretty hardcore, a lot of, you know, machismo macho type shit in there it's yeah it's there's there's some parallels for sure um so i read i've always been a strong reader my grandfather uh nurtured a love for reading in me when i was real young and uh it's just it's just something i've always done and, and i would read government study college textbooks that they would have in the library you know no no accreditations but i've read every textbook can talk about it intelligently at least half ass um and uh realize that a lot of those textbooks don't actually i mean they they tell you things from the government approved perspective you know <laughs> yeah. you know this is this is the way things are supposed to work but then here's how it actually works you know <laughs> right have you ever read uh have you ever read john taylor gotta mm, not that i can recall fam you need it yeah i'll send you i'll send you some stuff he's he was a he was a public school teacher for like 26 years and then he just quit because he was like, the way they teach these kids is fucking. And then, so he spent the rest of his life digging into the history of public schooling and where it came from and the indoctrination of it. And he just, he, he made a career out of railing against public school. And um, I always liked reading spy books and stuff. I like Tom Clancy. I would read actual true crime and true detective stuff. Um, I, uh, there was a book I read, I remember reading in TYC called By Way of Deception by Victor Ostrowski. Now, how much of that is real and how much of it isn't whenever it comes to real life espionage type shit, of course, they're going to spin shit. But I've always kind of thought it was interesting. Of course, back then I thought, well, there are good guys and there are bad guys. and These are the good guys and everybody else is a bad guy. But turns out it's not quite that way, you know, Sam Giacana. He, yeah. uh, he had a, he had a saying after the Kennedy assassination, he said, this should show the American people that there's no such thing as bl white hats and black hats. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's much more shades of gray, if anything, and some black. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, as far as, um, how I started settling into, into cynicalism, um, I guess it was a mixture of uh, kind of an indomitable hope in humanity getting along. And that's kind of what it's kind of premised on. Um, how much of that is naivety? How much of that could, could feasibly work? I don't know. I mean, I'm sure it comes down to the end, you know, where are you talking about and who and when, you know? So um, can people peacefully live together and cooperate for our, their common well-being sure i mean you know i guess you know i mean if you look back to the hunter gatherer days before you know agriculture and everything else started making shit get organized and city states started appearing that's kind of how they lived you know you kind of you had to watch each other's back and of course there was always tribalism i suppose you know these people here and those people there and we want what they have so we're gonna go take it and they get pissed and come and take it back but um yeah, I, I kind of hope that uh, a part of me still, you know, despite despite everything recently, I still kind of hope that, you know, if you could get the sociopaths and psychopaths away from garnering power and influence, that maybe that could happen. Uh, I'm a lot more jaded these days. That's why I told you I felt like I was drifting more towards just pure anarchism than anything. Right. Um, like no left or right, just kind of, I just don't want, I just want to be left alone. Right. Type deal. Yeah. 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 No, and that's understandable. I mean, um, <clears throat> today's society is so fucking crazy. It's somebody, somebody always, it's almost like somebody always has this feeling in their bones that they have the right to control you in some way, shape or form. And it's yeah. like, yeah, I just kind of want to do my thing. I, I, I don't really want to be fucked with i kind of want to create my own tribe do my own thing and live my own life and and cooperate with my tribe and i'll leave you alone you leave me alone type deal yeah. 
you know, and you see this, and, and you went, you went way back um, when you're talking about this, but there are instances of the instances of this today. You have the state of Tehran in Michoacan, uh, Mexico, right? They ran all the cartel, all the government out of their city, and they they're living a, a cooperative lifestyle. Now, I tend to think which people put way too much emphasis on labels. So I, yeah. I kind of just, yeah, I'm an agorist, whatever, like you right. think what you want of me. Like I, I know what I want and I know how I think about things. So yeah. it's like, uh, most of the time your labels don't even matter to me. So, yeah. <clears throat> but the way I kind of look at you and I always kind of have, is you say you're a syndicalist, you kind of have this idea of syndicalism, but I kind of look at you more like a mutualist. Like, like it's more of a, a, a voluntary cooperative kind of situation yeah. that you're interested in. That's, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, so I've, I've always kind of seen you more as a mutualist and I'm cool with mutualists. You know, like mutualism, like to me, it's like, it's kind of like what Voltaire Declare was describing in her uh, essay, Anarchism, right? Cause she was like, she went from a collectivist, like a communist, uh, anarchist to an individual anarchist. And she came to the conclusion that neither of you are right. Neither of you know how these things are going to work out. Like yeah, you, you just don't understand it. Like you're, you're too caught up in your ideology to actually see how the world actually works, how the market right. actually works. Right. And how a yeah. fruit, a market without the corruption, without you know, the corporatism, how it would actually operate on a scale. There would be communes, there would be individuals, and they would all be acting in the best right. interest of whatever's happening. And your communes, right. your communes would probably be made up 90% of family, right? So you would go back to this kind of like familial tribal structure like it, it wouldn't be anything like what people think it would be. And so that's kind of why I just kind of, when somebody tells me their ideology, I just kind of shrug. Like, I don't even know what you mean. Like, right. I, because, I, because good if, you think you know what you mean, but I don't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because once you reach the end goal of what yeah. you're trying to set out to do, it's going to uh, look completely different than anything yeah. you could imagine. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, that's kind of like know. the way my mind works like around that. it. Yeah, nothing fits in the boxes neatly and perfectly like that, especially when you're dealing with humans. Right. Yeah. And yeah. and um, you had you had said to me a while back that you thought I was right. You were like, "Oh man, I think you're right. I think I, maybe I'm a libertarian." As, and as, I, as time time goes forward, I, I find myself just wanting not to be fucked with more than anything. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it, that's just that's just part of getting old and like get off oh, my okay. lawn. <laughs> I'm an, I'm, an, I'm an anarcho old man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but you know, and then we see these these lockdowns, you know, and, and the whole COVID restrictions and all the stuff going on with this. And you can't help but, like, why aren't people, like, gathering into tribes around this shit, right? Like, it's like, what the fuck, dude? Like, yeah. my dad got COVID, and it was really bad. Like it fucked him up for a while. And then I have buddies that are like straight libertarian that won't get vaccinated because they don't understand. Nobody knows what this vaccine is. It's this like, they rushed it out. yeah, they well rushed it's, it's a new technology as well. Yeah. And, and so you're like, I don't know if I want to put that in my body. Right. So I know people that have gotten, but I also know people that have taken the vaccine and gotten really fucking ill too. So it's right. like, I don't like, why are we fucking and dividing? They you that you still have to wear the mask, even if you get it, because it doesn't always work. So what the fuck? Man? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And then they, and then, and then you watch last year, right? And I'm sure this fucking hits you right in the heart, man, because you watch last year and all these, all these mom and pops, these small businesses get shut down by the government and Amazon has the best year ever. 
You know, mm-hmm. like these huge corporations are getting fucking these benefits that the government's throwing at them. And you're like, hold yeah. up. I like, I can't back this, you know, like, but, but you no. see people, you see communists, self-proclaimed communists backing this. And you're like, what the yeah. fuck is happening? And this is kind of what happened in Catalonia, right? Like you and I have yeah. talked about this. They kind yeah. of turned the syndicalists into the useful idiots. I mean, it seems from what I've read, they did pretty well for themselves. But I mean, they didn't they didn't have a chance when when the when the organized army came back for them. They just was overran. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They were used to take control of, of the of Catalonia, and then they just turned around and said, "Okay, you're up against the wall now. Like it's your turn." Yeah. I mean, when when you've got a large organized and funded military force like that, I mean, that's why that's why these empires, especially the U.S. empire, why it controls so much and why it's such a dominant force on the stage is because, right. I mean, all, I mean, you've got so much wealth and power up there that, I mean, you're not, I mean, and look at our military compared to the rest of the world. I mean, it's ungodly. Right. It's huge. Oh, and, yeah. I mean, who can Absolutely. against that? I mean, there's, there's, there's nobody, I mean, nobody wants to go to war with that. I mean, it's going to be over with before it starts. Right. Yeah. So, so as you've kind of like floated through this portion of of what's happening in 2020, 2021, yeah. how has that affected your mind in the way that you've kind of processed things and, and changed the way you think about things? Well, I used to be very happy-go-lucky, and I used to be a lot more trusted, a lot more. Um, now, now I'm a little bit more skeptical. You know, I, I pay a lot more close, closer attention to the people around me and in my life. You know, I mean, very, very little escapes me now. And I'm, I'm questioning motives a lot more. Hmm. Yeah. It makes you cynical. Like It does. It yeah. does. And, yeah. it, and it really, it really, it really turns you off the, away from the whole idea of unity with anyone because you can't trust anyone. Right. Well, and I mean, lucky for me, like, I've, I've found a, a really good, like tight knit group of people, whether they're online or in person that I, I can associate with and that I feel like I'm like part of, and, you know, I've kind of found my tribe in a way and uh-huh. by finding that it, it makes it, it, it makes it bearable, which is part of the reason I added you to the signal group. Cause I was like, dude, like. Like we're all just like, like fuck all this shit, you know. Like we just yeah, want to. I don't talk much in there, you know. Those guys don't know me, and whenever I do post, they're probably wondering who the fuck I am. So I read the stuff, and I, you know, I I keep up with some of the conversations that I found interesting. They talk about some cool stuff in there, but that's why I'm not too active in there, though. No, that's all right. I my my wife's cousin's in the group, and he doesn't he didn't comment at all. He's never said a word in there. He's like, I just read oh, it. Well. I've talked, I talked to him on the phone. He's like, I just read it and learn shit. You know, like, I'm like, all right. Yeah, no, absolutely nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, everybody in there are, are close friends of mine, like good friends of mine. I, I just people I want to spend my time with and, and talking to that I knew were on signal. So I just started adding them to the group. I was like, yeah, this is the new normal. This is how we communicate yeah. now. Yeah. That's why I named the group the new normal. Yeah. So, you know, and yeah, there's no assholes in there. Everybody in there is pretty cool. So yeah, it's all good. So yeah. let's, let's get into what happened to you. Um, we've, we've kind of broken the ice and let people know kind of who you are and the way your mind works. Let's get right. into what happened to you over the last year, because this is, I found this extremely interesting whenever you told me about it. Uh, yeah. what was it like probably about five, six months ago, you told me about it yeah. and, uh, I made, a post on, I made a few posts on Facebook about it kind of even right after, I mean, like pretty much while it was happening, I called them out. Cause I mean, even if they are feds, you didn't have to be an asshole. So, <laughs> right. Well, and I knew like, I knew it was something I wanted to talk to you about, but I also wanted to kind of wait on you to be ready to talk about it because I know like yeah. it's stressful. There's a lot of shit going on. You know, like yeah. whatever it, on your time, we'll, we'll chat about it. So, okay. so like kind of give us a break now, like where did, how, how did this start? What happened? Well, see, like I said, I, and like I told you um, before we started recording, I, I really have 
fewer facts and I have than I than I do, you know, conjecture. I have a fuck ton of conjecture. Mm. Um, I mean, it's it's kind of I kind of felt like that guy in the meme, the conspiracy theory meme, where he's got all the charts on the wall in his hands. And they're like that. He's like, <laughs> I fucking know what it's like. This. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I, I see. I know exactly how he feels. <laughs> So you're like you're like a broke Alex Jones. Yeah, man, exactly. That's exactly right. I, I, I like to believe I'm somewhat better looking, but you know, I mean, there's a lot of other things I like to believe that haven't really panned out too. So <laughs> you have more, you have more hair than he does. Well, that's for sure. That's for sure. <laughs> um, well, what, I can tell you the facts of what I know. I know my apartment was bugged. I know that there were people in my apartment who didn't have any right to be, or at least. They didn't live there. Um, they would know things and tell me things that I had only said in, you know, in hushed tones and the confidence of my apartment. Um, and I had begun suspecting at a certain point. I mean, they, they, they actually kind of told me they were watching me. They, I mean, there was a lot of innuendo and double speak going on and, uh, a lot of you know suggestions and stuff so they kind of told me they were watching me and i wasn't really worried because i know i'm not doing anything illegal but um i've pissed off a lot of people man i mean i went on different but, but these and, were these were people you were hanging out with right yeah well um the main guy uh he was he was under the cover of a dope dealer and uh he would hang out with the guy that lived in the apartment behind me and uh, I don't know if he was a fed and the guy who lived behind me was an informant. Um, I know that during this time, a whole lot of people moved into my apartment who ended up becoming close friends with me and hanging up. My, my apartment turned into the party spot. We'd go over there and drink and karaoke and shit like that. Right. And uh, it, it just happened really quickly. Um, and uh, there's a lot of booze involved maybe some hallucinogens. Uh, <laughs> it was a lot of shit that was going on during that time. Uh, but um, I don't know. I mean, like I said, I wasn't doing anything wrong. So whenever they, they told me that they were watching me, I was just like, okay, fine, whatever. If you want to watch me jack off and play video games, so be it. <laughs> I mean, that's basically what you're going to get. Yeah, right. Um, um, I didn't hardly go anywhere. Um, there do much. Um and I was kind of in a transitional phase during that whole time I was over there anyways. Uh, I was trying to figure out what I was going to wanted to do, what I was going to do, how I was going to do it. Just kind of, you know, going through some adjustments and then all that hit me at the same time. Um, he would, the guy, the main guy that was friends with the guy behind me, he would give out a lot of dope around the apartment, speed and, I don't know what the fuck that was. He gave me that one time, but son, listen, I've done LSD before I've done shrooms, but I ain't never been on a trip like the shit he gave me that time. That was like some weaponized LSD. That shit was fucking balls, all balls. And, uh, I don't know what his game plan was, what his end game was, um, what it was that got me in their crosshairs to begin with. Like I said, I'm pretty vocal on, on a lot of shit very vocal anti-government, anti-corporatism. Um, there's, and, and I'm sure I'll piss a little, I get on WikiLeaks uh, Facebook page and go toe to toe with the AstroTurfers on their, in their group. Uh, I'm sure they, I mean, I'm sure there's probably a laundry list of reasons they had not to like me, but as far as actually doing anything illegal, I, I wasn't. Yeah. Well, well, it's what, what struck me was, the way they they were coming they i mean they were buddying up with you and yeah. and you actually i don't know if you want to say his name he's been on my podcast before but you actually talked to somebody who would have the know the the wherewithal and the know-how of how this is going have i yes yeah if you don't want me to say it i'll edit it out but i'll say it now john kiriaku had actually oh yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. you I had actually called him and was like this is happening like what the what do i do about this because this is yeah, really strange did, um i'm leading up leading up to coming on this program i did i did actually reach out to him 
Uh, he's in Greece right now. He'll be back Sunday. I hope I just didn't compromise no fucked up shit. But <laughs> whoops. Um, but no, nah, um, yeah. Um, that's and because I, I wanted to run that by him. And after watching Wormwood, you know, ever since that happens, I've been looking into these stories of people who have been hit and put in the crosshairs of the feds, like um, Matthew DeHart the guy from enemies of the state who was running a dead drop server for WikiLeaks and uh, Wormwood, the uh, net, the documentary on Netflix about the MK ultra program and that right. us uh, chemist that they threw out the window. Yeah. And, uh, Frank Olson. One thing, okay. That, one now, thing that, that was the guy's, that was the chemist's name is Frank Olson. There you go. Frank Olson. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Um, I, I've studied that. I've studied that, that, that mystery quite a bit <laughs> yeah yeah well it's not really a mystery anymore that um that reporter from the investigative journalist at the end of that documentary from the new yorker uh seymour seymour hurst hurst what struck me was when he said that they had a program or a mythology for identifying dissidents and then executing them and I got to think back one, and you know how they said that they gave that guy LSD and threw him out the window that time like that, and then try to say that he had a psychotic break and committed suicide. Right. I wonder if those bastards were getting ready to suicide me that night. I mean, seriously, I don't know that they were. They might have just been sitting back watching me trip balls and laughing their ass off, you know. But right, or questioning I, you. Yeah, trying, trying yeah. to get you to say something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, they. I mean, I'll, I'll say it's sober. They don't have to give me dope for that i mean shit i mean i'll tell them i don't i don't i'm i'm think like back when anonymous was going hard and strong before all that got got stomped i was pretty active then and i've been on wikileaks irc chats you know and um i mean i've brushed shoulders with a lot of different people um i was never a part of any um security operations for anonymous i was never involved with with, with wikileaks um probably new people that were maybe they're worried about hold on man you're breaking up hold up can you hear me now yes sir there you oh, go oh here we go what all right was the last thing right. before it went all crazy um you you had rubbed shoulders with some people from uh, WikiLeaks. Yeah, I'd been on uh, some of their IRC interlight relay chats, um, and um, I probably knew some in passing, but I was never part of any of the sec ops that they had going on. I was never involved with WikiLeaks directly. You know, I don't know anybody from WikiLeaks that I know of. But um, th like I said, there's a, probably a lot of reasons why they'd be interested in me. But if there was one thing in particular that that set the whole thing into motion i don't know what that is yeah so so this guy was was hanging out with one of your neighbors kind yeah. of kind of eased his way into your your care and and found his way at some of your parties at your house right they basically turned your apartment into a party house and yeah. started started giving you drugs hello boogie yeah Yes, I know. You have to be part of the podcast. This big yeah. head, motherfucker. He even look, at off, that, he, look at that big head. Oh, look at that. But so, so when did you find out that, or, or when did you start suspecting that this guy was more than just some dope dealer? Well, after they came and basically told me that 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 they had a team on me, um, there was there was guys that would walk up and down How did, my street. That was, huh? How did this conversation go? I'm sorry. There was another guy. I, I'm pretty sure it was a team of them. I don't think it was just one. Um, I don't know who's who. You know, you never do in those situations, really. But um, we were just standing around talking outside my apartment one day. And uh, and uh, he's, he's like, he's like Brian, I don't know. You could be a cop. I said, man, I ain't no cop. He said, no, look at me, Brian. You could be a cop. And I was like, oh, you know, and I took that. I, I, there's a couple ways you could take that. I took I, I took that as they were watching me, and there was other things that, that had been said and done that kind of tipped my head that made me be like, huh? Like they would say weird things that give me, you know, look, you know, kind of communicate body language and shit. Um, all that's conjecture, though. 
But what I do know is that they would know things that I would, like I said, that they would say in the privacy of my apartment. My laptop disappeared out of my apartment for a week and then mysteriously reappeared. Um, my, they tossed my apartment one time um, when I was away. And uh, those facts I know, you know, that's, that's indisputable. My girlfriend was there at the time. Me and her had really just gotten together. Um, well, she had, we had been friends for, you know, a couple years prior, but she had moved in with me and, uh, and she came in right when all that stuff was coming to a head. So she got to see a lot of it. She was there whenever they were telling me my criminal history and shit like that. You know, I mean, they knew, they knew my whole rap sheet. Yeah. You were, you were telling me that was one of the first things you told me is that they knew things about you. That they had yeah, no they business knowing. That, that you're only going to find if you know if if you do an NCIC, you know, you'd have to run like a federal investigation check on me. They knew everything. You yeah. Know? And um, so it was spooky. It was, it, you know, it, like I said, I'd already suspected early on, and I wasn't doing anything wrong anyways because I am vocal and because I was. You know, I had rubbed shoulders with a lot of people who, you know, are not in favor with the government. There you go. Yeah, we're back again. All right. So uh, you were saying that uh, that you you had been rubbing shoulders with uh, people that were pretty vocal and that you were pretty vocal. But yeah. like what, what I would what I would wonder is. um were you, were you involved in any activism at this time? I know you were you were kind of a you were pretty outspoken online. I know that, but were yeah, you would, were you going well, to? No, no, I I didn't have the funds to do any of that. Um, and plus, where I live is out. I live pretty remote. I'm out in Bumfuck, Egypt, in New Mexico, right on the Texas line. So, I mean, anything like that is happening far away from me. So it's not like I had the, the means to attend or anything like that. No, all of, pretty much all of my activism has been in journalism or in online activism. You know, I wrote a few articles for the Pontiac Tribune um, that were pretty in their face. Um, and, uh, no, there's, like I said, there's a laundry list of reasons that they would have not to like me. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's odd because you're not in the middle of any of these big circles, but I mean, you, you felt, you, you felt threatened enough to where you moved shortly after all this. Yeah, thing. I did. Yeah, I did. I, um, that, that, that apartment was not secure in any way, shape or form. Um, uh, it, you know, just from just, just, you know, immediately when that stuff started coming to a head, I felt like things were escalating. I started thinking tactically and strategically. And my, the first uh, tactical move I had to make was to get out of there because I didn't have any kind of firearms as a felon. I can't legally own any. Um, so I have, would have no way to defend myself if, if something were to go down. Um, uh, it wasn't a very big apartment complex. And most of the people who lived there were Cubans who had come to work here in the oil field. So they didn't speak a lot of English. And quite honestly, if something was to go down, they'd probably just close the door, go back to bed or something, you know? So, uh, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't like the strategic situation of it all. Um, I knew that my apartment was bugged with uh, at least audio. I don't know if they had video or not. It would surprise. I know for a fact they had the audio. Um, and how did you get this information? Was this something you found the bugs in your apartment? Uh, well, I saw them when they were removing it. And uh, and they told me. They told me things that, that I had said only in the confidence of my apartment to my girlfriend. They knew things that nobody else would have any way to know. Because not, right. not something that's in a text message. Nothing. It's just things that I had only said. So, hmm. And they told me that. So they, they would tell me. They would repeat what I had said. I'm like, oh. Right. Yeah, so and was, this was kind of like the whole Tucker Carlson situation where they started, where this guy, this whistleblower had come out and said, hey, look, you've been under surveillance for the last, you know, year or whatever. whatever. And yeah. Tucker Carlson was like, oh, yeah, whatever. And then he started sending him emails 
that he would have only sent to like family members, you know, stuff like that. And, and so, yeah, that's kind of freaky when, when something like that happens. And did you receive any threats out of all this? Did they, did they threaten um, you? They, they threatened, they threatened to set me up with child porn if I didn't fucking. And stop is my- this, this is when your laptop went missing, right? Yeah. So how did that, yeah, how, what happened there? Like, can you start us from the threat and then it, it, explain how the laptop went missing and then showed back up? Like, well, that was, um, that was a pretty crazy fucking scenario that you had explained to me. Yeah. He, yeah. He told me that. And, uh, and, and I thought, I thought, well, I mean, that's, I mean, that's like, that's like spook shit 101 <laughs> where they're trying to get rid of someone. Step one, discredit them and make them a social pariah that no one wants to listen to anything they say. And that's a tried and true way to go about it. It's what they do to Assange too, even though he never even had child charges filed on him. They claimed it was a sex charge, you know? Right. And, um, and so then I, I kept my laptop cause I didn't use it hardly at all at the time. And I kept it in a drawer, uh, in a little shelf around the corner from my bed. And after he said that, I, or that night, that night when everything kind of came to a head i come back i come back to my apartment doors wide open the lights are on i walk in there and shit's the apartment's been tossed and uh they dumped my girlfriend's Mm -hmm. purse out they dumped her purse out um her shit was all over the kitchen floor um and uh at that time at that time just kind of clean things off i turned the lights off I, i checked to make sure you know if anything was stolen, nothing was really stolen. And I went to bed next morning. I, I think I said my laptop because I remember that thready mess. So I jumped up and I went over to my drawer. I was like, babe, you know where my laptop's at? It wasn't where I usually keep it. She's like, no, I ain't seen it. So I go through the closet. I go through my whole apartment looking for it. It's not there. So I thought, oh, well, look at this shit. Then um, how long was it afterwards, babe, that it showed back up? She said about a week later, it showed back up just mysteriously right where I had it. So, uh, and there's no, like you, you have, have you had it like looked at, like there's no weird files or anything on it. I did a full restore on it. Um, so I mean, but they've got the sophistication to do whatever the fuck they want to with it, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, who knows? I mean, I still got it because it's the only laptop I got that's working right now. But that's it right there. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, it was some weird fucking shit, dude. And it's as and you know, we talk about um about freedom of speech and how dissenting should be allowed, you know, you know, that in a free society that that people should be able to question their government, but that's not really what you get, is it? No. No. And I know, I know podcasters, honestly, I know podcasters that have been contacted and been told, Hey, like, yeah, why don't you just kind of change the tone of your podcast? Just a slight bit. You know, you, you still talk about all this stuff. Just stop talking about this. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and offered money and, you know, luckily, Everybody that I know personally that has been approached in that way has, you know, told them to pound sand. I'm like, no, fuck you. I'm going to talk about what I want to talk about. Like, you know, yeah. so yeah, it, it, I, I think there's something with this, with this e- extreme ability to connect with each other, uh, all across the world, there's yeah. a, a huge threat to the power structure and to their propaganda because there are people like me or some of the other people I know or like you for say that, that aren't willing to go along with it and it will just say what they want to say. Yeah. And, and they don't like that. I mean, we're, we, you know, for, for decades, they had a monopoly on, on the talking points on the propaganda. And now they don't know how to react to those people like an Alex Jones, you know, who they throw off the internet. And I remember watching people cheer when Alex Jones was like kicked off of everything. And I was like, you don't understand what this means. Like 
He's just the first. Like he they they tested this on somebody you knew about and you didn't give a fuck. Now they yeah. can do whatever the fuck they want to you, you know? Yeah. And nobody's gonna care because nobody knows who you are. And, and that was another point that I actually got into a lot of contention with with a lot of other people on, you know, that you know call themselves leftists. Um was on the whole censorship thing back when they took him off of YouTube, Alex Jones at Infowars off of YouTube. And I'm like, listen, if they're going to start here, they're not going to stop there. And then they're going to come for for the people on the left. Any, any establishment voice on the left, they're going to shut them down. And look where we're at now. Now you can't say fuck you on Facebook without catching a 30-day ban. I know I can't. Since since the week before the election, the last presidential election, I've probably only had access to my main Facebook account maybe a month, maybe a month and a half total. I, I catch bands repeatedly, like instantly. It's, it's, I mean, censorship's here now. I mean, it's corporations and government are the same. You know, you have President Biden telling Facebook to, to rein it in, and he did, you know. Zuckerberg did it. Yeah. Well, and, and a lot of people, and I don't know what it is about the left, man, nowadays, but they have this idea that that Facebook and Twitter and Google are private companies. And it's like, no, these companies were have been financed and in and, and researched by the federal government since their beginnings. You know, uh Michael Rechtenwald, who who's who who was was a communist um for a long time. He's a um he's a former professor from NYU and he was a communist. And he's he's shifted positions, and he's more of a Misesian. But he wrote a book called The Gulag Archipelago, and it, it like he goes through in detail how Google was financed from the beginning by the CIA and the federal government. Sure. These these are not private entities. These are at best government contractors. You know, they're like the they're they're the internet version of Blackwater. Exactly, exactly what it is. Inter, uh, government contractors. That's that's in all for any for any material reason. That's exactly right. Um, you know, uh, I forget what his name was. The guy. Okay, you seen Citizen Four about the Snowden leaks, right? Yeah. It had that one part. The guy who had uh, he had a, a, a an email business, and it was set up to where even they didn't know the contents of the email, and the FBI came to him. Well, you're going to give us access to this guy's email that he didn't have it, or we're going to make it to where we have access to all of your email. And instead of doing that, he just shut his business down. Right. And uh, I mean, they, they they, you know, they, these programs like X key score and, and all the other programs that you can type something into a, a, any kind of, you know, chat bar or search bar and then not even hit send. And they know that you type that in. There. Right. I mean, their capabilities are pretty phenomenal. You know, these, you know, that was lit out in the Snowden leaks and, yeah. uh, you know, mass surveillance, mass incarceration. These are issues that, you know, especially the mass incarceration when, I mean, I, like I said, I've been locked up for two thirds of my life. So it's very real. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, and, and, and you can't talk to the left about these things, right? Like if you talk to the left about the, the, the program, to that allows the CIA to disguise their hacking abilities in another country's language or something like that. They're like, okay, so, and I'm like, well, they're trying to say that all these hacks come from Russia. What makes you think all these hacks come from Russia? Like, yeah, they can, what, they can like, fake your, your signatures, your fingerprints, the inter internet fingerprints, how they had the toolkit to fake all that. I mean, you're yeah. not gonna, I mean, they've, they've got it sewed up. Yeah, they, they they can they can pretty much manipulate anything they want when it comes yeah. to digi the digital world. Yeah. So it's it's like a lot of, in a lot of ways, and I think this is why. And I'm I'm going to be talking to a buddy of mine uh, on Sunday about this, but I think this is why a lot of people are going much more into a traditional direction because that is one way they can't control you, they can't get involved right yeah. is if every person is working on a community level and a tribal level and in operating on 
on a smaller level. Um, mm-hmm. John Bush, who's an agorist, started a website called freedomcells.org where you hook up with people in your, your own community and you basically create a mutual aid society amongst yourselves, right? They can't, they can't control and monitor all this. If we're all working individually offline, like away from all this technology where they don't have the options to, to keep track of us. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And so, I think this is why a lot of people are moving in a more traditional direction and being like, yeah, whatever. I'm going back. I'm going back to what it was like. I, I don't care what y'all are doing technological wise. I'm moving yeah. myself, my life backwards into a more 1950s, 1940s style of life, which is yeah. what I've done basically. But I'd been wanting to do it for years where I moved out to the country and started growing my own vegetables and raising my own chickens. And, you know, yeah. like, I, I just want nothing to do with these people. You know, I want, I, I want it. I want nothing to do with like the cities. I want nothing to do with like the majority of the population. Like they can have their shit. Just let me be. I get it, man. I mean, especially after all this shit happens, you know, it really, it really has had a chilling effect on me, dude. Like, even now, like, even when I, like, I have sock puppet accounts on Facebook where, I mean, and I don't do any, I don't really do much speech as far as politics on it. And, I mean, that's what they was going for, and they got it. I mean, whenever, whenever you know the hounds are on you like that, man, you start to, you start to reconsider, you know? Right. Yeah. No, no, no doubt. And you're just kind of like, I just want to create my own and just be left the fuck alone. Like, just yeah, leave me be. That's where, I'm, that's where I'm at now. I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I'll yeah. just, just the fuck alone. Well, and and the the one thing that we were we've always been convinced about with politics, mm-hmm. we're entering the political space. Like when I entered the political space, or you entered the political space, we were convinced that proselytizing worked and that was the way to spread a message yeah and all you were doing was putting a target on your back by proselytizing now yeah, I'm, I'm the- too fucking stubborn to stop telling people i'm an agorist i'm like whatever man go fuck yourself what are you gonna yeah you, are you yeah. gonna arrest me for growing my own fucking vegetables kiss my fucking ass you know like well you know do you, i don't know when i was in prison I met um, some cats that were part of the Republic of Texas. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. I talked to some of these guys. Yeah. They laced me up on a lot. And I mean, they would, they would have their own little communes where they grew their own food and have greenhouses that the, the, the cops would come in there. They would arrest people. They would pull their crops out, destroy their greenhouses, all that. Yeah. I mean, look at what happened in, in fucking Waco. Yeah. 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 That's another one. And Ruby Ridge. Ruby yeah. Ridge is another one. Of, one of the things I've always said, it's, it's always been an interest to me. I, I've been saying it for years since I started this podcast, especially that the government doesn't mind if you're religious, as long as your religion recognizes the government as being above your God, as long as the, as long as the religion acknowledges the government is the ultimate authority they don't give a shit so that's why you that's how they separate cults and fucking like true religion right if you're getting called a cult more than likely it's because you're doubting the power or the the influence of the government like their authority you know i mean you you look at it right now and after january 6th i mean they had what brennan come on and start labeling fucking libertarians as domestic terrorists because what we question like your motives. We don't like your wars. Like we don't like your fucking central banking. Go fuck yourself. man. Yep. <laughs> I don't give a shit. Yep. So much of the focus of my podcast is to point out abuses of power and how bad things have gotten and the direction in which we're heading as a society and it can be a real black pill i've partnered up with richard grove to offer my listeners an opportunity to sign up to his autonomy course Uh, the autonomy course is designed 
for people looking for solutions, people that want to shape their own future, people that are not willing to be at the behest of large corporations or the United States government or the banking system. The autonomy course is designed for those of you who wish to have complete control of the reins of your life, who are looking to be successful, that to thrive and not just survive, to provide for your family by utilizing your existing skills and learning how to market and sell those skills in order to be your own boss or learn new skills in order to leverage that into a new career opportunity. So if there's a job out there you've been trying to get or you've been wishing you could get, but you just don't have the skills for it, the autonomy course is the place for you to start to learn how to land that position, to learn how to market yourself better, to gain confidence, and to be surrounded by a community of like-minded people that will encourage you and help you along the way. So use my affiliate links and go check out the autonomy course. It could be right for you. Yeah, it's all about control at the end of the day. You know, I was in a, a, a conversation with our mutual friend. I don't want to say his name again. I know you said you were edited out and that's great, but so I'm just not going to say it leaves you some less editing you have to do. But yeah. I was talking with him and I, and I said, man, I'm trying to understand what the goals are on the world theater you know i'm not just talking about the pacific or southeast asia like what the goals are on the world theater and uh you know he just kind of was quiet for a second and says i guess we'll never know afterwards i was thinking I said, you know what it's literally world domination that's what globalism is basically you know economic domination if not military domination hegemonic it's hegemonic it's okay, hegemonic. hegemonic yeah check out the book um the grand chessboard by zabignu brzezinski like, and he, in the seventies, he laid out the entire blueprint of what you're seeing go on oh, yeah. all, all around the, all around the world. And it was basically, it was basically a bet that the world that, that the United States could create a world hegemony before a new superpower rose up after the Soviet union was to collapse. Yeah. Right. That I mean, that was kind of the gamble. And now China's rising up and America has never gotten a hegemony. And so it's like, okay, now what do we do? So they're in panic mode in all actuality. It's kind of like, it's kind of, it, it, it resembles very much like kind of like a biblical kind of like tale because it's like the, the, the United States imperialism very well aware that it is, it is lost and it is dying but it's unwilling to uh, let go of the power. You know what I'm saying? It already knows yeah. it's lost. It's just a matter of when it crumbles, but it yeah. won't let go of the power. It's just clinging on for dear life because it's the only thing it has left. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's, and it's, it's interesting, you know, um, I'm trying, like I said, I've been looking at, like I just finished right before the podcast, I finished a documentary called Dirty Money on Netflix, talking about the uh, 2008 recession and, you know, Wells Fargo's role in the whole thing. And, you know, and, you know, of course, you know, too big to fail. And of course, all that again comes back down to the central bank and, and fiat, the fiat dollar. But it's a, uh, it's it's a it's a it's a trip once you begin to start actually filling in the blanks on in and understanding the way the world operates. It's it's like what the fuck, man. Yeah. Have you ever read uh, Confessions of an Economic Hitman? I have. I certainly have. Yeah. I got uh, the the new Confessions, the, the revised version of it. Yeah, sure have. I have it too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah when, I, they, when they went to Central or to Latin America and the corporations would make deals and yeah, yeah, get their resources. Yeah, and it, I mean, it just it, it just lays out the corporatist structure for you. Mm -hmm. Like you can yeah. take that, you can take that blueprint that John Perkins lays out for you, and you can just flip it over and say, "Oh, okay, that's what happened in Iran in 1959 or whatever." <laughs> like you're like, yeah. "Oh, okay." <laughs> like, yeah, and then we're yeah. and then we're watching it happen today kind of in reverse, but it's the same thing that's happening today with the World Economic Forum and the Great Reset and all this shit, right? 
we're just we're watching just a reflection of what they've always been doing and they've just been all they've been doing is perfecting the art and so now they're turning it on us instead of utilizing it in third world countries they're turning it on us that's i forget what it was it was sometime in the last couple of decades where they they had changed one of the laws that um protected us from domestic propaganda i mean i know they had done it uh, once before in 2013 was that when it was yeah in, in the ndaa pretty- yeah obama yeah. signed it into law yeah yep that's the one and uh since then we've we've, we've seen them really ratcheting it up like full scale they, they you know they they don't they don't half-ass nothing you can give them that <laughs> right yeah well and, and that's the thing about podcasts and it's something i've said several times is we're fighting a one trillion dollar propaganda machine. That's what we're yeah. fighting. I mean, yeah. like when people like refer to the cathedral, that's what they're referring to. It's a one trillion. I mean, they got they have possession of of academia. They have possession of the media. They have possession of politics. Like, if you think that any any of your votes matter or your voice matters, like you have to realize you are fighting a one trillion dollar a year propaganda machine. Yep. That's what you're fighting. And and there's a lot of us out here. And I mean, there's a lot of podcasts and there's a lot of us that are just like, I'm not going to shut up. Like, fuck you. I'm not going to shut up where I'm just going to keep talking, you know? Yeah. And we all have our own reasons, but it's there. There are some people that are like, okay, strategically, could I utilize, you know, the Republican party or, or like what, what can I do to strategically like throw bishops, a good example of that. Yeah. Like, where, where he, yeah. It's kind of like, they've already kind of like duopolized the, the, the po- political spectrum. So yep. kind of like, um, kind of like you would see like the justice Democrats have taken over the democratic party in so many places. It's kind of like can libertarians, and freedom lovers take over the Republican party in so certain places, you know, and should we, should we back like a DeSantis or something like that? As much as our instincts tell us not to, sh- is it better to back a DeSantis than to be, you know, subjected to a Kamala Harris, you know, like, <laughs> well, I mean, well, but, but see that, and, and, and that's a good point that, that there is that, Despite that, despite the Justice Democrats having getting getting in there, you still get the Kamala Harris, you know. And honestly, the Justice Democrats haven't really. I mean, they 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 buckle at every moment that it it would matter, you know. Well, right, like the whole push the vote thing or force the vote thing. That well, they, right, they, and then they start attacking people like Jimmy Dore, who are only good voices yeah, out there on the exactly. left, right? Exactly. They attack Glenn Greenwald. They attack Jimmy Dore. They attack Matt Taibbi. Like the yep. only good voices out on the left are getting attacked. And, 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 and I mean, Jimmy Dore, um, what's her name? Anna Kasparian basically accused him of sexually harassing her. Like, and it's like, Jesus Christ, you people, y'all have no shame. None. He no, was your was best fine. friend T-Y-T. five minutes ago. The TYT at one time was a powerhouse of a show, you know, and then they took the money and then they started pushing corporate talking points. And that's when Jimmy had this falling out with them. I worked, I was a regional coordinator for Wolfpack that Jane Huber started in Texas. Yeah. Up in Texas. And, um, uh, you know, we were, we were trying to get an article one conviction called, but of course that just kind of petered out and nobody really heard anything else about it anymore. I, st- I still, every now and then I'll talk to the, to the national director for Wolfpack, you know, if I, cause me and him are friends on LinkedIn and I'll see that, you know, he's been director of Wolfpack for X many years and I'll, Last time I talked to him, I said, "Yeah, I said, man, I missed the I missed the me that 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 thought the system could be changed from within." He's like, "Yeah, it's a truly daunting task." It's like, "How about impossible? You're not going to change it from through through partisan politics. You're just not. They're not going to allow it." I mean, the whole Bernie fiasco on the left, how all the fraud surrounding that. I mean, you're not just give it up. I mean, you might you might get you might get a, a maverick into a position. I mean, we had you get your you get your Bernies and your Ron Pauls. But those are outliers, you know. They're they're rare, very rare. Yeah, well, and they figured out a way to fucking get Bernie to fucking fall in line. Yeah, afterwards, yeah. afterwards, after after he got cheated twice, he still. Well, they went after his wife. 
And after okay. they went after his wife, they he was just like, all right, whatever y'all want. Yeah. Anything I mean, you want, I'll, I'll do it. I mean, what else can you do? I mean, you're not going to beat them. You're just not. Not like that. Well, I I don't want to leave this on a black pill, and we're getting close to it. We're right around an hour. All right. Fair enough. I don't want to leave it on a black pill. I want to leave it on a white pill. I think, as I said earlier, they already know they're beat. And I don't think there's anything they can stop the movements of freedom to, uh, that people want to live their own lives. Like you, you've discovered over the last year, like, well, wait, like, I like the idea of syndicalism. I like the idea of mutualism, but I want to, I want to pick those people that I'm fucking interacting with. Right. I don't want to be, and see, this was always kind of the libertarian argument. And so the, the libertarian argument was always, I don't mind, supporting my community in in voluntarily interacting with them i don't want to be forced yeah to interact with a bunch of people that that i have nothing in common with yeah i I get that better now than i ever did before (laughs) after all that shit last year yeah I, i i i completely understand yeah, I mean, what are we funding? You know, like what yeah. what are they doing? I mean, they're coming after people like you, who yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't even have a platform. Yeah, like well, like you said, you're a felon. You're a for, you're an ex felon who's just yeah. trying to get his life right. Like I'm just yeah. trying to make it now. I, I'm yeah. not. I'm not a young dumbass kid doing stupid shit anymore. Yeah, I'm, I'm just not trying to go on about my business for WikiLeaks. I'm just fucking. I'm just talking shit online. Is 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 really the main thing that I do? But I'm really good at it, and I'm not scared to go on a senator's Facebook page and tell them how it is. You know, <laughs> yeah. you gotta figure out which senator that was that you fucking pissed off. <laughs> oh, oh, I know, I know who it is. I need to send him a fruit basket. <laughs> I'll name names. Schumer. His name was John Cornyn. <laughs> oh, that guy. That guy. Yeah, I got yeah. my problems with that guy. Yeah. I have I have my issues with Ted Cruz, but not near as bad as I have with John Cornyn. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> just 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 for your own well being. Stay off his Facebook page. <laughs> I, I just ignore oh, most of these. You're going to end up having a lot of new neighbors who are real friendly. <laughs> <laughs> they, they got a long way to go to get to me. Yeah, well. Yeah, I am kind of out in the middle of nowhere. I am on nine acres, so. <laughs> yeah, that's I guess that's a blessing. Yeah, you ain't got nobody up your ass. That's true. That's true. Well, all right, man. Well, let's call it quits here. I'm going to. I gotta eat, and then I gotta go through and edit the little bit of little bit of shenanigans that the CIA was pulling on us. Yeah, yeah, they getting were, into our little, feed. My, yeah, it's a little technical difficulty. Yeah, your your Fed was listening in, and interrupting the stream. He, he knows I love him. <laughs> <laughs> I get online, I'll be like, I'm like, all oh, these fucking FBI cocksuckers, except for my FBI. You know I love you. <laughs> <laughs> well you got anything to plug dude uh not really man just uh just to to whoever's listening to any activists that are out there in the freedom movement or you know any 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 kind of uh anarcho anything just uh watch your six man and it pays to be skeptical it really does yeah. all right dude I'm going to stop the recording here. If you're going to play, scandal pick and choose, well, it's a game that was made for you to lose. It doesn't really matter how many times, it's the same old worn out story, same old lines. There are all one dirty fingers in hypocrisy, bragging on their feet of mediocrity. Don't feed them cause we don't even need them I never celebrate the tyrants out of taking our freedoms Yeah, I said fuck
fuck them, don't feed them, cause we don't even need them. I never celebrate the time, kind of take in our freedom. What's it gonna take for you to see that we're living in a wreck democracy? People stand in line for the things that they've been choosing, paying no attention to the rights they keep on losing. Don't even need them, I never celebrate the times that I've taken, I'm free.